Hello, hello, hello everybody out there watching on YouTube and welcome to the final event of Daytona Speed Week to kick off Season 6 of the NNS CRA Marvel Studios Cup Series. I'm Levi McIntyre, the voice of the NNS CRA Marvel Studios Cup Series, here to welcome you to the Great American Race, the Daytona 500, to kick things off for Season 6 of the NNS CRA Marvel Studios Cup Series. And Boy, we've got quite the race set up for you guys. 40 drivers, one trophy to take home for this race today. And of course, as you've seen the starting grid for the race today, as a result of not only qualifying for the front row, but the Gatorade duels that took place yesterday. And we had quite an eventful Gatorade duels yesterday, so I'm expecting perhaps double the excitement here for the Daytona 500, considering all 40 drivers are on track at the same time for 40 laps. And keep in mind, we may have a commercial breakout around the halfway point of this race, so stick around for that. But as you see the starting lineup, starting in the last row, Kyle Matthews and Seth Cole, who couldn't catch a break during Speed Week so far, but perhaps they can come back from the back and work their way up to the front. Front row stayed the same as normal after qualifying on Tuesday and the duels yesterday. Joshua Sakuli on the pole with defending series champion Dylan Jacobs in second. So two former champions starting on the front row. Row two are the Gatorade duel winners Jake Rogers and Rob Evans. Row three we have Kamikaze Racing teammates Jordan Forbes and Jay Jefferson. Row four will comprise of Logan Bradley and Bradley Zorg Draggers. So we got Bradley row four. And then finally row five, James Shelley and Tim Fiegel. Let's go ahead and get the command to fire engines for the Daytona 500 here at Daytona presented by Avengers Endgame. Drivers, start your engines! As all 40 drivers drive around the racetrack for their one pace lap around here before racing begins. So yes, this race is presented by Marvel Studios Avengers Endgame, which is set to be released in theaters worldwide tomorrow. And I will definitely be going to go watch it. After all, it is the final film of this first era of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and what is being known as the Infinity Saga. But, plenty more movies to come over the next decade from Marvel Studios. But aside from that, with this race today, it's going to feel really, really special to whoever wins. Because this could kickstart their season and potentially becoming a champion. But, we'll see how things play out as the race is getting ready to get started. As like I said, two former series champions... Joshua Sakuli, Dylan Jacobs. In fact, Dylan Jacobs, like I said, is the defending series champion, both starting in the front row. So we shall see how things go here in the beginning. As the pace cars in pit road, and it's time to boogity 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 go racing.
So that was first lap completed, the first lap completed, and we had about, I don't know, three or four lead changes on the first lap, and now we got another one as James Shelley takes the lead. Logan Bradley was the one who led lap number one, so that's going to be big for that newcomer in the number 90 for Average Joe Enterprises. Now, I was going to mention a few notes with how this racetrack has been with this new package we're running for Daytona, Talladega, etc., and other big two and a half mile restricted plate style racetracks is that couple notes if you're running the very bottom you might hug that double yellow line quite a good bit and if you're at the very top lane three wide coming off a of turn two here in just a moment you may brush the outside safer barrier a little bit coming off the corner but i was going to mention that with yesterday's duels we saw two completely different styles of racing take place because during duel number one you saw the inside line really get a huge run whereas in duel number two it was the outside lane that had more momentum depending on how many cars you had behind you and right now it's looking like it's going to be the inside lane that's prevailing at least for now We'll see how things turn out as the race progresses, but James Shelley's still leading the way. And what did I tell you about drivers who started in the very back of the pack can work their way up in a matter of laps. Seth Cole, who started dead last, already within three and a half laps, up to second, and might actually take the lead from teammate Shelley. Impressive first few laps for Seth Cole to get his race going as... He started dead last, and here in about four laps, got to the race lead. Seth Cole, of course, the owner of Backmarker Motorsports. Right now leading the way, as I saw a couple cars actually scrape the outside safer barrier and off the trial hole, and that's another thing that could happen. While Seth Cole got to lead that lap, James Qualls now has the race lead, and of course... Yesterday in the duels, I actually don't remember if it was the duels or in the Bud shootout, but Qualls showed a little more of an aggressive side to him, and he's been racing a lot harder than he usually does, as meanwhile, Baskinger leads, but here comes another guy who started in the back of the pack. Kyle Matthews now has the race lead, with help from good friend Michael Norman, but Norman gets pushed up to the middle, as here comes the 26 of Joey Parkhill, who didn't have the best of runs in the duels yesterday, despite leading a lap or two. Now he's up here in the lead as they are three wide, several rows deep, and a couple of cars. Looked like a couple cars got together, and actually one car severe damage, and that's Joshua Collard as he's got engine smoke blowing out. Little bit of damage on Bradley Zord Dragger's car, or that could be a, uh, a glitch, but no caution, surprisingly, I guess, because they kept it straight, despite damage, as Cole Baker also has damage. And I guess, yeah, that, uh, oh, he actually does have some damage, Bradley Zord Dragger. Not a good start for that newcomer, as he enters pit road, and we'll see if he can get his car back out onto the racetrack to at least make up some points in case cautions were to fly. Let's see what happens. He does have some pretty big rear end damage though. Let's see. Looks like he's going to be able to continue and actually Dylan Jacobs with some right side damage. He's going to be able to continue but he's going to be taking tires. But as a result of that quite a few cars ended up getting separated from the draft pack. James McLeod just on the very tail end. He's going to have to hope that that outside lane falls back a little bit so he can catch back up to the draft. Tim Fiegel has lost the pack. Same with Carson Gum and Jay Jefferson. But it looks like really quickly that damage got repaired for Bradley Zordrager, but he's now going to fall one lap down. So tough break for the 66, but at least he's going to be able to blend up here and very well with the pack and still not quite up to speed but it does look like that did help James McLeod a little bit in catching back up 
into the draft, but now we got a four-car separation about to happen unless Dollarton, Zorg Dragger, Rogers, and Young decide to go through as Rob Evans is going into pit road. Not sure why unless he's got... Yeah, I can kind of see some right side damage on his car. Perhaps he was trying to get into pit road to lap before, but he got boxed in and couldn't get back in there. And actually, this might have actually helped a little bit for Tim Fiegel and Carson Gum, although it, this has really, really separated the pack quite a bit, even though we still got a large group of cars up here at the front battling for position. You got a lot of other drivers who have now fallen out of the pack, so some of those guys are going to be hoping for a quick caution to come out, but it looks like Dylan Jacobs' damage has been repaired. But what about Rob Evans? We'll see if we get a shot of the right side of the car as he enters turn one, and his damage is repaired. Cole Baker, on the other hand, he's still got quite a big buckle. Well, not a huge buckle, but a slight buckle on the front hood. So, yeah, a piston issue after some contact on the racetrack with a couple of drivers. Joshua Collard, who was a dominant car last season, is going to not start the season off well with a last place finish and will not be getting points going into next week as Rob Evans trying to blend in with the pack and it looks like he will but nonetheless Rob Evans blends in but is holding up the outside line a little bit but now the front of this large group of cars battling for the lead is now going to get really spread out as far as three wide racing is Logan Bradley with the run to the inside for the lead Dylan Jacobs who I believe yeah he's already a lap down and now he's two laps down the outside pole setter not off to a good start here today let's keep an eye on his speeds and make sure he is gonna be up to speed I would think he is now that his damage has been fixed but let's stay on that 78 for now and see what happens I do think he will be up to speed because Rob Evans is still running strong up here in the pack despite being a lap or two down yeah I think the 78 is going to be just fine it's just he ain't going to be able to move up as much in positions because he's now two laps down yeah, we actually now got four cars lapped. Rob Evans, Bradley Zordrager, Cole Baker, and Dylan Jacobs with the 78 of Dylan Jacobs being two laps down and collared out of the race. But right now, Logan Bradley leads the Daytona 500, and he led the first lap earlier in the race. Right now running in second as Caleb Kilburn, one of his teammates, trying to use the middle to get to the back of the 90, but look at that run the inside lane gets as Phil Parker in the double zero is now up here, and he's going to go to the bottom. I don't know if that was smart because look at the 77 of Jordan Forbes getting the run above the double zero, but the double zero may have help in the form of Emmanuel Hartnett in the 20. Coming to the line, and it looks like Phil Parker will lead that lap. Although now they are catching Cole Baker. Let's see how slow Baker is. And he was about five miles per hour slower than Dylan Jacobs when they caught up to him. And I feel like he's going to hold up a lot of drivers as the top two of Phil Parker and Melissa Alexander have now pulled away from the rest of the pack as the 18 continues to hold up the outside line. A lot of drivers are not going to be too pleased with the 18 of Cole Baker, but some drivers that might be thanking Cole Baker is this other big pack of cars led by Rafael LaDuke. Can they catch up to this main pack up here in order to make this 
pack of cars even bigger. I don't know. We'll see. It's going to be close, but this pack right now led by Rafael Leduc, who was last scored 25th. And I believe that is the rest of the field back there from 25th all the way to the back. I don't know. It's going to be close, but if these guys can get single file back here, they could catch up to the back of the front pack right here. But I don't know. DJ Curtis, Jordan Forbes, and Cole Baker, yeah, they're starting to lose it as Cole Baker. You can definitely tell he is not up to speed after getting involved in some incident earlier with Collar, Jacobs, and Evans. But back up here at the front, Logan Bradley continuing to lead the way as he had it for a little bit after uh, they caught Cole Baker and that caused him to pull away from everyone. But now he's about to have a challenger, Trent Dunham, now going to approach the inside. But he could be overwhelmed by Seth Cole, who's going to make it three wide with a huge move to the bottom with help from James Qualls. Seth Cole back up to the front. A couple other key contenders for this race we haven't talked about yet. Charles Sanford in the 03 up here in third, right behind uh, teammate James Qualls as he goes up to the outside. Don't know if that was a smart move because, like I've stated, whenever we're in the daytime here at Daytona, it's the bottom lane that gets the bigger runs. And there's Jay Jefferson in the 35, who's the last car on the lead lap, trying to stay on the lead lap, and he's about to get caught here in a little bit. But can he blend in with the pack and not cause any issues? That's going to be the thing. And, yeah, you can definitely tell that second group of cars, now led by lap machine Bradley Zordrager, yeah, they have lost the uh, main pack. All the way back here to Dylan Jacobs, who either has lost the pack or he's not up to speed. But I still think he is up to speed. I just think he's just lost the draft now. As Jay Jefferson now has blended in with the main pack up here. As we are a lap or, lap or so away from our commercial break, as Cole Deaver tries to take the lead from the in the middle but here comes Johnny Gardner in the nine car about to have the race lead for himself and when we cross the line we're going to our commercial break and it looks like it's going to be Johnny Gardner who leads here at the line stick around the race will be on the bottom of the screen but we're taking a commercial break we'll be right back okay let's see what we got to drink oh fucking perfect Ah, some good old Powerade. Delicious. No, not really. Powerade, the most overrated drink ever made. Go to your local store and see for yourself. What the fuck? There's a fucking crack in the fucking ceiling of my room, and it's leaking blood. Are there a bunch of dead birds up there or something? Either way, I need to get this fixed. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there! Hey, can you fix this for me, please? I sure can. Just give me a second. A few moments later. Another reason more people stay with State Farm. Get to a better state. Ah, it's nothing quite like having an avocado for lunch. Wait, what? What the hell are you doing? Why are you eating an avocado? Can eat one of my fudge rounds right now, boy! Little Debbie, you know I'm trying to cut back on eating sweets, you know. Why are you rejecting me like this, man? Please don't start with me, please. You used to love eating my products when you were a child. Now all of a sudden you want to avoid me. Why are you avoiding me? What did I do wrong to you? Okay, yeah, maybe I made you a little fat, but come on! You loved me so, so much! Levi, what the hell are you doing? Why are you betraying me like this? Fuck this, I'm going outside. Fuck this shit. Hey, get your big fat ass back over here right now and eat me! Eat me! Little Debbie. 
If you eat too much of her, you'll end up getting fat. But it's so good! Welcome back to the Daytona 500 as we are under caution for what looked like the big one ensued on the back straightaway off of turn number two. And leaders are now in pit road and Cody Lamas was the one who led at the line as he enters his pit stall. As let's actually go to our pit lane cam and see what happens. And it looks like perhaps a couple of cars will get a lap or two back as I saw some drivers stay out like Cole Baker stayed out. Dylan Jacobs stayed out, among others, so those guys could get a lap or two back. As it looks like it's going to be Cody Lamas, who comes out of the pits first, then Cole Deaver, James Qualls, Phil Parker, Trent Dunham will be your top five when we get back to the green. But let's take a look and see what brought the caution out for the first time today here in the Daytona 500. Well, here's a look at what happened. So they were four wide up here towards the front of the field. And it looks like Rob Evans was on the very bottom trying to stay above the double yellow line. And he's going to come up a little bit into Emmanuel Hartnett. Hartnett felt that was unappreciative of the 88. And he comes down into the 88. But the 88 runs him back up and says enough. And they were actually pr almost five wide right there. And they come up into Jake Baskinger. And miraculously, we avoided a big one because it looks like it was only the 54 who spins around as everyone else behind as we go to helicopter cam. Sheldon does a great job of avoiding. Let's watch the 98 of Seth Cole. He gets stopped well. Everybody did a fantastic job of not running into that 54 of Jake Baskinger. Otherwise, we could have had a much bigger problem than what we did. So pretty much just a single car spin on the backstretch within a big pack of cars. And that was a lucky break for some guys who were in the very back, like Rafael LeDuc, etc., who fell from the pack, are now going to be back up here. So we'll see how the racing turns out now. But that was a look at the caution. Let's take you to the restart here at Daytona. As expected, no other drivers are out of the race. The only one who is out is Joshua Collard. But this restart is going to be very, very interesting because Bradley Zordrager, while he's in front on the outside, he's on the very tail end of the lead lap. And then you got the lap cars on the inside, like Dylan Jacobs, Cole Baker, uh, Jay Jefferson, Rob Evans. But the leader is Cody Lamas. Second is Cole Deaver. Third is James Qualls. Fourth, Phil Parker. Fifth, Trent Dunham. Sixth is Johnny Gardner. Seventh, Emmanuel Hartnett. Eighth, Caleb Kilburn. Ninth, Melissa Alexander. Tenth is Michael Norman. Eleventh, with a slight buckle on the front end, is James Shelley. Eleventh is Anthony McCurry. Thirteenth, Kyle Matthews. Fourteenth, Matt McIntyre. 15th is Benjamin Miles, 16th Jonathan Zorlin, 17th Dylan Young, 18th Zachary Fitzwater, 19th with left side damage is Chris Dollerton, and then 20th Jessica Shelton. The rest of the top 30 is James McLeod, Seth Cole, Tim Fiegel, uh, Carson Gum, Rafael LaDuc, Jordan Forbes, Charles Sanford, J Joey Parkhill, Dylan Pote, Jake Rogers, and then the rest of the lead lap cars are Logan Bradley, Jake Baskinger, DJ Curtis, and Joshua Sakuli. As now we are back underway, green flag here at Daytona with 17 laps to go. Going to stay with the 18 of Cole Baker and watch him try and maneuver his way to let everyone behind him go by because he is definitely off the pace after the incident that took place at the beginning of the race that took Joshua Collard out. And unfortunately, he's holding up quite a few cars who are not going to be too pleased. And he's still holding up drivers, but at least he's trying to... Well, now he's going to the middle, now going back up. Oh, contact between Emmanuel Harden and Seth Cole because the 20 tried to go by the 18 but just didn't give quite enough room and that caused a little gap separation right there 
and I heard a car scrape the wall and I almost thought we had another crash take place, but we're still clean and green here in the 500. Let's go back to the 18 and watch and see how he maneuvers his way around as he's uh, almost through with... Uh, Whoa, and I couldn't tell who that was. Was that the 6 or the 26? Yeah, that was the 6 of Melissa Alexander who got the wall quite a bit there. And Logan Bradley, unfortunately, was caught in the short end of the stick there. He led early on, and now, unfortunately, he's probably going to lose his shot of winning this race now as a result of this restart. But let's get back to the action up here at the front. Cole Deaver now has the race lead as it's now 15 to go here in the Daytona 500 but we got some new contenders who we haven't talked about all day long Dylan Young and Anthony McCrory they're up here battling for their right to be called Daytona 500 winners Dylan Young although he's gonna try and follow Cole Deaver and maybe try and time a move at some other point in the race as Seth Cole maneuvered his way to the bottom to take third from teammate McCrory with help from the lap car of Bradley Zorgdragger. Seth trying to go to the bottom of the two, but here comes the 66 of Zorgdragger. He's trying to get back onto the, lead, onto the lead lap in case another caution were to come out and he would be back around with the rest of the pack properly and try and gain position. But he's got one more car to get around and that's the leader. Cole Deaver. As I was double checking, and yes, the 66 is a lap down. But he's going to follow the 8 for now. Caleb Kilburn thought about blocking the inside, and wow, he barely got in front of the 14 of Matt McIntyre to clear him for that second spot. Caleb Kilburn in his debut points race here in the Marvel Studios Cup Series, right now running in second. And how about Joshua Sakuli, the pole setter, restarted dead last of the lead lap cars, aside from Bradley Zordrager, and is already back up here into the top five, up to second. He's trying to go three in a row. Right now, why did I say three in a row? Uh, the coast to coast of starting on the pole and winning the race and I don't think it's ever been done before in the Daytona 500 here on this channel as right now he runs second behind the aid of Cole Deaver and now wow look at the double run for the 10 and the 42 it's gonna be is it gonna be three wide or not I don't know Sakuli he got a huge huge run and now he gets the lead back and that was his first I think that was his first lap led of the day he didn't get to lead a lap at the beginning after getting passed on the first lap for the spot so that's another valuable bonus point for that 10 car as far as the potential shot at the championship as Cole Deaver and Joshua Sakuli both go to the inside to block the momentum that the 42 of Kyle Matthews had. Yeah, Logan Bradley, unfortunately, got the short end of the stick and is slow as a result of losing the pack. Same with Dylan Jacobs, Cole Baker, and then Trent Dunham, Melissa Alexander, who are fast but are stuck by themselves, and then a little four-car group with Jessica Sheldon, Jordan Forbes, Chris Dollerton, and Emmanuel Hardnett. Meanwhile, the rest of the field are up here at the front. 27 car pack to battle, or uh, 28 cars, 27 on the lead lap though, is the thing. But back up here at the front, Jake Rogers, who won the Gatorade Duel number one race yesterday. He's looking to go for another win here in Daytona Speed Week. As it's now 10 laps to go here in the Daytona 500, is Jake Rogers trying to hold off everyone running the bottom, but I don't know, that outside line is still holding on very, very strong, which is really, really interesting because we saw yesterday in the duels that the only way the outside line got the runs they got was during the night race, which was duel number two. 
that or tires come into play. As right now, Johnny Gardner would actually have the race lead by running on the outside, but Rogers trying to run the inside and take that momentum away from the nine car. But no, that outside lane is getting some really strong runs here in the late going of the race. As Johnny Gardner actually goes down to the bottom to block Phil Parker. Although you gotta wonder if here in a couple of laps they're going to catch the 90 and the 18 and see if that's going to really shake up this field. And we saw that happen earlier anytime they were up to the 18 of Cole Baker. It did cause a big shakeup in the pack and a big shakeup for position. And I actually didn't even, I, uh, I think Deaver might have gotten the wall either off of the trioval there or off of turn two, but he's back up here into the mix as he got a huge run on the inside of Phil Parker. And he's looking to try and win. Imagine this for, uh, I can't remember if Cole Deaver's ever won in this series. He might have once, but in case he didn't, what a way it would be to win here in the Daytona 500 for his first career win. But now they have caught the 18 and the 90. Let's see what happens here. Looks like the 90 and the 18 are going to go to the outside. Well, the 90 is going to come back down and try and block to try and stay on the lead lap. As now as a result, three wide for the lead. And Sakuli, who's actually getting a push from his teammate, DJ Curtis, and actually one of, his co one of the co-owners of Curtis McIntyre Racing. The other one, Matt McIntyre, I could see him fifth car in line on the outside back there. While Sakuli has the spot, here comes Curtis with the run, and here comes another Curtis McIntyre racing car in Jonathan Zorlin. So you got the top three right now of Curtis McIntyre racing cars. Matt McIntyre in the middle there in that monster car, and then Phil Parker a little bit further back. As right now the four trying to hold off for another six laps, but they got another car they could have to deal with, and that's the 78 of Dylan Jacobs, who is currently two laps down and might go three laps down here in just a moment. But now Curtis with the lead, but here comes the 71 of James Shelley, but because they had to slow down for the 78, look at the double run the 10 and the 4 got. Side by side here at the line, but it was still Curtis who led that lap. Imagine if that could have been the finish. That would have been a, that would have been a close one right there. And meanwhile, James Shelley in third, but now is about to get passed by Rafael LeDuc, who should thank that caution for coming out because before the caution was out he was stuck in a small pack of cars that were losing the lead pack now he's up here in third still got a little bit of a gap to deal with between second and third but i got a feeling that's all about to change very soon as here they come with a huge head of steam up here at the front as while wow, LeDuc tried to go on the inside, but Curtis blocked him, and as a result, caused the 71 to make the move to the inside of the 09. Still side by side for the lead between teammates, Curtis and Sakuli. And then you got backmarker motorsports teammates on the bottom, James Shelley, Seth Cole. Sakuli, though, ends up going up to the outside, but Curtis is going to try and block him and keep him in the draft. But I'm shocked about James Shelley still running as strong as he is with that slight buckle on the front end of his uh, race car from something that might have happened on pit road. But he's still in contention to potentially win this race if he can get into the right lane at the right moment. As here comes, speaking of going at the right time, Seth Cole to the inside with less than three to go. 
Seth Cole with a huge head of steam running the middle as here comes Cole Deaver back at it with Carson Gum, who we have not talked about all day long. Carson Gum finds himself in contention now for this win. And he's getting pushed from a couple of lap machines of Rob Evans and Jay Jefferson. Deaver right now holding on strong as he blocks all three lanes to keep the position he has. Carson Gum now up to second, at least for now, as he's going to move up to the middle, which opens the door for those lap cars of Rob Evans and Jay Jefferson to get a huge head of steam, as it's now two laps to go for Cole Deaver. Deaver, pretty much, he's mirror driving right now, and whenever you're up at the front this close to the end of the race, you got to try and mirror drive to keep everyone behind you at bay to keep the position you're in. And it's a good thing that the 8 has the 88 of Rob Evans to use as a pick to keep anyone from really trying to make a move on the 8 car. But now Matt McIntyre trying to use the inside of the 88 to get by but couldn't quite make it as the white flag is out. White flag for Cole Deaver. Matt McIntyre now finally gets underneath the 88. He's still got a shot at it, but behind him is Cole Deaver's teammate and his boss, Michael Norman, and I think we're under caution. According, or I thought we were under caution. I thought I saw yellow lights come on. And now Matt McIntyre with the run underneath, but here comes Michael Norman. Michael Norman in his first race back. Points-wise in this channel in a couple of years, look at him go! Holy cow, he came out of nowhere! Coming out of turn four, doesn't look like anyone's going to challenge him. Checkered flag, getting ready to wave. Michael Norman in his return race wins the Daytona 500 at Daytona. The three car returns to victory lane on this channel for the first time in I don't know how long. Michael Norman wins the Daytona 500 in his first points race on this channel in about two or three years. And he came out of nowhere at the end. I think that was the only lap he led all day long, but it was the lap that counted the most. Unbelievable move there by the three to go inside three wide of his teammate Cole Deaver and Matt McIntyre to make that move work. And he should also thank that lapped car of Bradley Zorgdragger for giving him that push there at the end, which was really impressive there. But let's look at the rest of the results. Jonathan Zorlin, as a result of all the craziness there on the last lap, comes through with a great run in the second spot. And then behind them, teammate Matt McIntyre, who was also very, very close to winning this race, but gets a third place finish. Charles Sanford, solid performance in fourth. And then Anthony McCrory rounding out the top five and fifth. Carson Gum also had a shot to win it there at the end, but gets a sixth place finish. Cole Deaver, so close. So, so close to winning this race, but still gets a phenomenal run in the seventh spot. James Qual showing his more aggressive side and it paid off with a great run in the eighth spot. Zachary Fitzwater with a solid performance in ninth. And then an impressive run with a slightly damaged race car for James Shelley in the tenth spot. And then there is the rest of your top 20. And then your top 30. And then the rest of the lead lap cars and then cars our lap down or more. And then only one car out of the race and that was Joshua Collard. And it did not bring out a caution, whatever had happened. And we may never know what happened to the 43 other than some contact with some other people. But with that being said, thank you so much for watching Daytona Speed Week. Thank you for watching the Daytona 500 presented by Avengers Endgame. Where are we heading to for the next race? I don't know. We'll have to wait until Monday to find out. But until then, here are your results, rookie points, and regular points heading into race number two. And this is Levi McIntyre, signing off.